Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to check out Monarch, a game that will be launching on Kickstarter around mid-February of 2015. This game is for three to four players, although it does support two. Uh, the developers don't officially recommend that. It's for ages 11 or 12 and up, and the average playtime is about 20 to 35 minutes. In this game, players will be taking on the role of sisters, who are going to be competing for their mother's crown. To do that, they're going to have to earn the most victory points. So, uh, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the game and see how it's played. All right, now before we get started, it's important to stress that what you're seeing here is a prototype copy, meaning that it is not reflective of the final product. All right, now I'm not going to go over all of the rules found in the manual because as you can see here, there's a number of different pages. Um, I'm going to opt to give you the highlights instead. As far as game setup is concerned, you're going to want to form the land first, which is a 3x3 three three grid of 9 cards. You'll have simple farms in small villages. Now I know this doesn't look like a 3x3 three three grid, but I was trying to capture everything under one camera shot and I couldn't do that. Uh, utilizing a 3x3 three three grid. But what you're going to want to do is shuffle these uh, small villages up and simple farms up and then deal them out uh, in a 3x3 three three grid. So you'll have some simple farms and some small villages to form your land. You're also going to shuffle this deck of market cards and you'll deal five face up to form the market row. Players will be buying from this market row throughout the game. Now these banners up here are optional. Basically players can take one during the game and they're sort of like personal goals that they can try to achieve in order to earn extra points at the end of the game. Players will also get one of these guides here like once per turn, unlimited times per turn, that kind of thing. And they'll also receive five food and five gold to uh, form their starting bank, so to speak. Okay, now a player's turn is pretty simple. All they're going to do is either harvest or tax, and then if they want to, they can buy some cards from the market row, or they can even sweep the market row, and I'll explain what that is in a minute. But in order to harvest food, what they're going to do is just, they're going to say, I want to harvest food. So they'll count up the number of apples on these simple farms here, and they'll receive that much food from the bank. Now, you can upgrade these uh, land cards. There are some cards in the market deck here, like this irrigated field. So if a player were to buy this card and place it down like this, you can see here that it awards players two food uh, whenever they decide to harvest. So you can upgrade these land cards in order to collect more resources on your turn. You can also tax. It's similar to harvesting food, except that you have to pay one food for every village that you're going to tax. So in this case, you've got one, two, three three, four small villages, so the player would have to spend four food in order to collect four gold. After a player has either taxed or harvested food, you can't do both, they can buy as many cards from the market row as they want to, assuming they have the resources. Now, you can see the cost of a particular card in the upper right-hand corner. Let's see if we can focus in on that. In this case, this card here uh, will cost five gold and five food, whereas this one here only will cost two gold. So some cards cost food, some cards cost gold, or a combination of the two resources. Now a player can also sweep the market row. To do that, they'll just pay three gold to the bank, and they'll discard all five cards and then deal five new ones to replenish the market row. Okay, so you're probably wondering, what are all the different cards you can buy in the market deck? Well, let's start with these crown cards. Whenever you buy a crown card, it'll go in your own court. And basically, a court is just a large space in front of the player to where they can lay down cards. This uh, crown card will award players points at the end of the game, but it also has a special ability down here. It tells players how it will interact with the other cards in your court. So you want to be careful not to mix and match cards in your court that may end up hurting each other. You've got these unwanted guests, uh, like this jealous cousin. You uh, will buy this and then put it into your opponent's court, and it'll award them negative points at the end of the game. You can also upgrade your land cards down here, like I was showing you before. This irrigated field will be placed on top of a simple farm to increase the amount of food it'll give off whenever you harvest. And likewise, you can put this particular card, the monastery, on top of a small village, and it'll increase the amount of gold it pays out. You still only have to pay one food during the tax uh, portion of it, but it'll award more gold whenever you go to do that. 
Finally, you've got these moon cards, and these are resolved immediately whenever they are drawn from the market deck. And basically, these are just events that you'll have to resolve whenever you draw them. Now here's a quick look at your banner cards. Now again, these are optional. You do not need to include these in your game if you don't want to. Just to quickly sum up a banner, whenever you do claim it throughout the game, and you can only claim one. You can't claim more than one, and you can't replace them once you decide to uh, fly a particular banner. So what you pick is what you get. Now whenever you do uh, claim a banner, you get a special ability that you can use throughout the game, and then you'll get some bonus crowns at the end of the game, depending on your special uh, victory condition down here. So for example, Example, this banner of wisdom. You must have at least two wisdom cards in your court before flying this banner. Throughout the game you can collect one gold when another sister taxes and at the end of the game it's worth one crown for each wisdom card in your court or the land. And the other cards are similar in that regard. Uh, banner of balance, banner of might, you've got the banner of bounty, and the banner of culture. Okay, now the game will end when one player has seven cards in their court. So you're probably thinking to yourself, well, what's to stop me from just buying as many court cards as I want just to end the game as quickly as I can? Well, that is one strategy, but you'll have to keep in the back of your mind that not all cards go well together. So um, if you just buy up cards without reading them, then you may end up hurting yourself. For example... This Diplomats card here is worth double crowns if in a court with a Wisdom card, which is a good thing. However, um, let's see if I can find a different combination here. The Cannon is a Might card. Upon purchase, discard one unwanted guest, so powerful card there. However, um, this Harpists and Flutists uh, crown card worth no crowns if in a court with a might card. So if you get this cannon, which is a might card, and then put this culture card in here, you'll actually get zero crowns at the end of the game because it does not mesh well with this might card. However, on the other hand, this pure white stag is worth double crowns if in a court with a might card. So you have to read these cards carefully to make sure that you're mixing and matching the right cards. All right, and there you have it, a very brief look at Monarch. It's important to stress that I did not cover all of the rules found in the manual. This was just a quick overview to give you an idea as to what you're in for should you decide to support this game. Speaking of which, like I said, it'll be available on Kickstarter to support around mid-February of 2015. So if you like what you see, go check it out. If you want to read my preview, you can at www.dadsgamingaddiction.com. And if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, that way you can keep up to date with any new content I've been to publish. This is Vince, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.